The DP Kohli Award for Best Detective Head Constable and Constable for the year 2019 and 2020 will also be awarded. Our Chief Guest today, Honorable Mr. Justice Shri Anvi Ramana, Chief Justice of India, is an eminent jurist and has donned the hats of a journalist, lawyer, vivid writer and has the experience of practicing in the High Court of Andhra Pradesh and Tribunals. Sir has also functioned as panel counsel for various government organizations. Sir was appointed as the 48th Chief Justice of India by the Honorable President of India on 6th of April 2021 and is holding the office of Chief Justice of India since then. Sir has made immense contribution in the cause of administering justice and has written papers on various topics of legal importance. It is such a great honor and privilege for the organization to have him here on this occasion. We are also honored to have here with us Central Vigilance Commissioner Shri Sureshan Patel and Secretary Personal Shri P. K. Tripathi as our esteemed guest today. Both these dignitaries have been a source of great support and strength to Central Bureau of Investigation. I now request Director Central Bureau of Investigation to welcome our guests. Thank you, sir. Now I request Director Central Bureau of Investigation for his welcome address. Honorable Mr. Justice N. V. Ramanna, the Chief Justice of India. Honorable Judges of Supreme Court, Delhi High Court, Shri Patel, Central Vigilance Commissioner, Shri Tripathi, Secretary D.O. Pinti, Count of India, distinguished leaders of police and security organizations in India, former distinguished directors of CPI, senior officers of the Government of India and the state governments, my fellow colleagues in CPI, past and present members of the CBI, friends from print and electronic media, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed a proud privilege and honor for all of us in CBI to welcome each one of you as we mark the 59th raising day of the organization. To commemorate this occasion, the 19th DP Kohli Memorial Lecture has been organized to coincide with the raising day as a mark of respect to our founder director, late Sri Dharunath Prasad Kohli. We in CBI feel humbled that the Honorable Chief Justice of India, respected Sri Ramana Ji, Ramesh us and will be delivering this lecture. I, on behalf of the entire CBI family, extend to you, sir, a very, very warm welcome. The journey of this organization from special staff to special police establishment to Delhi Special Police Establishment, to the Central Bureau of Investigation has been a long and eventful one. From the time it was set up by the Government of India, resolution wide, 1st April 1950, 1963. Apart from the memorial lecture, today's function also includes presentation of President's Police Medals for distinguished services to outstanding achievers of CBI. We are indeed very proud of the substantial achievements I extend my heartiest congratulations to all the awardees and to their family members. Sir, it is a great honor for them to receive this prestigious award at your hands. The CBI owes a great deal of its reputation of professional excellence and integrity to the talent, commitment and sustained hard work of its officers and personnel who form the backbone of the organization. Ladies and gentlemen, we, as an organization 
owe a debt of gratitude to the, to the invaluable contribution of late Shri D.P. Kohli. Shri Kohli was instrumental in laying down the foundations of vigilance institutions in India, initially as IGP of the Special Police Establishment from 23rd July 1955 till the formation of CBI on 1st April 1963, and then as Director of CBI till his retirement on 31st May 1968. For the uninitiated, he was also a member of the Santhanam Committee, and he was also the then IG of Madhya Bharat and Uttar Pradesh. Sir, his stellar leadership in the Vigilance Administration right from 55 to 68 has been something that books can be written about. Through these long years, Sri Kohli gave tremendous leadership to the organization, and the organization's motto industry, impartiality, and dignity is what is ingrained in, grain in DNA of the CBI today also. Sir, we have been very lucky to have had him as a shaper and conscious keeper of the organization. As a tribute to him, we have been organizing this memorial lecture since 2000. Sir, the organization as it stands today has acquired cult status as an institution, which is the last word in investigation of criminal matters. The immense trust and faith reposed by the public, government, and the judiciary is a matter of great pride for members of this organization, and we remained humbled by this and resolved to strive to succeed and keep the faith reposed in us. Sir, every organization during the course of its evolution faces multitudes of challenges in their operational environment. However, this organization has remained relevant and thoroughly professional in its functioning in no small measure to the commitment and resilience of all ranks and file. Sir, ladies and gentlemen, India today is on a cusp of rapid transformational changes. In a transformative India, where digitization is happening hitherto at unimaginative speeds, one of the fastest in the world, this has led to rise in complex changes in law enforcement ecosystems. The growing global interconnectivity is beginning to unfold newer and more complex challenges for law enforcement in India. In the form of transnational cyber crimes, terrorism, organized crimes, white collar crimes, corruption, and financial frauds. Shifting the transactional operations from physical space to the cyber space. The CBI has been in the forefront in meeting these challenges at the global stage, being the National Central Bureau of Interpol for India, as well as being the nodal agency for transnational organized crime, anti-corruption crimes, bank fraud cases, etc. We remain committed to upholding our performance on an international stage also, sir. The CBI Training Academy is also shortly joining the Interpol Global Academy Network and will emerge as an international hub for police training in Asia. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are honored to have Honorable Chief Justice of India, Sri N. V. Ramnaji Amitsas. Sri Ramnaji is a jurist of great standing in the pantheon of the Indian judicial system. His contributions in the justice delivery system are seminal and especially relevant in India today. His thoughts today will certainly help in augmenting and laying down a new roadmap for effective functioning of the criminal justice system. His thoughts would also help us in facing our day-to-day -day challenges in meeting in meeting out justice to all and not only the privileged. The fact that he has kindly consented to a request to deliver this lecture and endow the medal is a matter of great pride for us. Sir, officers from CBI branches across the country are present here and from various state police departments are also attending this session virtually. Today's topic, democracy, role and responsibility of investigative agencies is especially relevant in the light of various challenges that are facing this great democracy today. I'm sure that the thoughts presented here shall help us to navigate the challenges more effectively. While once again extending a very welcome to all guests for gracing the occasion, I now invite the Honorable Chief Justice of India, Sri N. V. Ramana, to kindly endow the President's Police Medal for Distinguished Services to Outstanding Achievers of the CBI. Thank you, sir.
President's Police Medal for Distinguished Service on the occasion of Republic Day 2014, Mohammad Rashid, Assistant Sub Inspector of Police, Economic Offences Branch, Delhi. On the occasion of Republic Day 2015, Sri S. Velia Pandey, Superintendent of Police, Anti-Corruption Branch, Chennai. Sri N. Krishnamurti, Superintendent of Police, Special Crime Branch, Delhi. On the occasion of Independence Day 2015, Sri Ashok Babu, Superintendent of Police, Special Task Bureau, Delhi. Sri Lakshman Tripathi, Sub-Inspector of Police, Anti-Corruption Branch, Port Blair. On the occasion of Republic Day 2016, Sri S.S. Kishore, Superintendent of Police, Special Crime Branch, Delhi. On the occasion of Independence Day 2016, Sri Ravel Singh, Assistant Sub-Inspector, Special Unit, Delhi. <laughs> On the occasion of Republic Day 2017, Sri Sushil Prasad Singh, Superintendent of Police, Anti-Corruption Branch, Nagpur. On the occasion of Independence Day 2017, Shri P. Sashi Kumar, Head Constable, Anti-Corruption Branch, Bangalore. On the occasion of Republic Day 2018, Sri Raghuvendra Singh, Head Constable, International Police Coordination Committee, Delhi. <laughs> On the occasion of Independence Day 2018, Sri Nagendra Prasad, Superintendent of Police, Anti-Corruption Branch, Dhanwad. Shri K. N. Varke, Superintendent of Police, Special Crime Branch, Shiruvananpuram. <laughs> Shri B. Shankar Rao, Deputy Superintendent of Police, Anti-Corruption Branch, Hyderabad.
श्रीमती शमा मारूफ डेप्टी सुप्रिंटेंडेंट ऑफ पुलिस एंटी करप्शन ब्रांच देहरादून On the occasion of Public Day 2019, Shri B M Pandit, Additional Superintendent of Police, Economic Offences Branch, Delhi. On the occasion of Independence Day 2019, Shri Pankaj Kumar Srivastava, Joint Director, Head of Zone, Kolkata. Shri Amar Singh, Sub Inspector of Police, Security Wing, Delhi. On the occasion of Republic Day 2020, Shri Dhirendra Shankar Shukla, Joint Director, Head of Zone, Economic Offences, Delhi. Shri T V Joy, Additional Superintendent of Police, Banking Security and Fraud Branch, Bangalore. <laughs> Shri Deep Kendu Bhattacharya, Additional Superintendent of Police, Special Unit, Delhi. Shri R. Parth Sarthi, Deputy Superintendent of Police, Economic Offences Branch, Delhi. <laughs> Shri O. Prakash Bishnoi, Head Constable, Economic Offences Branch, Delhi. Shri Sanjay Kumar Bhatt, Head Constable, Special Unit, Delhi. <laughs> On the occasion of Independence Day 2020, Shri Prasanjit Rai, Superintendent of Police, Economic Offences Branch, Kolkata. Shri Surinder Singh Bhullar, Deputy Superintendent of Police, Anti-Corruption Branch, Chandigarh. <laughs> Shri S. Ravi, Head Constable, Special Unit, Chennai. Shri Shyam Beer Singh, Head Constable, Policy Division, Delhi.
श्री वजीर सिंह हेड कांस्टेबल इकोनॉमिक ऑफेंसेस ब्रांच दिल्ली श्री विजय गोस्वामी हेड कांस्टेबल सीबीआई हेड क्वार्टर्स दिल्ली On the occasion of Republic Day 2021, Ms. Ampat Meena, Joint Director, Head of Zone Administration, Delhi. Shri Sarla Das Mishra, Superintendent of Police, Economic Offences Branch, Delhi. <laughs> Shri Vivek Dheer, Deputy Superintendent of Police, Anti-Corruption Branch, Jammu. Shri Surinder Kumar Rohila, Deputy Superintendent of Police, Anti-Corruption Cell, Delhi. Shri Basant Singh Bisht, Head Constable, CBI Headquarters, Delhi. Gold medal for best investigating officer of CBI for the year 2017, Sri Velladu Rai Navaraju, Additional Superintendent of Police, Anti-Corruption Branch, Kotin. DP Kohli Award for the Best Detective Head Constable and Constable for the year 2019, Shri K. Samiullah, Constable, Anti-Corruption Branch, Bangalore. For the year 2020, Shri Gangaram Bhatti, Head Constable, Special Crime Branch, Delhi. Thank you, sirs. I would now like to request our Chief Guest, Honorable Mr. Justice Sri Anvi Ramana, Chief Justice of India, to kindly deliver the lecture on the topic for this year, Democracy, Role and Responsibilities of Investigating Agencies. Brother and sister judges of the Supreme Court of India, brother and sister judges of the various high courts, Sri Suresh and Patil, Central Vigilance Commissioner, Sri PK Tripathi, Secretary Department of Personal and Training, Sri Subodh Kumar Jaiswal, Director Central Bureau of Investigation, Sri Prabhin Sinha, 
Special Director, Central Bureau of Investigation, Law Officers and Judicial Officers, Commissioner of Police Delhi, all the DGPs and other police officers who have joined online, distinguished awardees from CBI, officers and the staff of CBI and family members, other distinguished guests, media persons, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great privilege to deliver the 19th DP Kohli Memorial Lecture. At the outset, I would like to pay my tributes to late Sri Dharmanath Prasad Kohli, the founding director of CBI. He was an exemplary officer. Sri Kohli was renowned for his courage, conviction, and remarkable efficiency. His vision turned CBI into the premier investigative agency of India. The tales of his unimpeachable integrity traveled far and wide. When the director, Sri Subodh Kumar Jaiswal, came to me to invite for this lecture, I told him very frankly that I may have to express some critical opinions about the functioning of the police in India. Hope he has not invited trouble by uniting me. See, this wall comes across as an officer who has committed towards improving the functioning of the organization. I remember the times when CBA is in anxiety. We used to conduct several press conferences even before conducting a proper investigation. I am happy to note that under the present leadership, the organization is maintaining a low profile, as it should be. My only wish, Mr. Director, is that you abide by the rule book and stand by principles. I wish you and all the officials of the CBI and other investigating agencies the best for the future. Let me begin with an interesting Telugu story written by one of the famous criminal lawyers, Rajakonda Vishwanath Shastri. The predicament of uh, a foot soldier in the police force is captured beautifully by the famous author, popularly known as Ravi Shastri from Andhra Pradesh. This story dates back to over six decades. I shall loosely translate a part of it for your understanding. This is the lament of a head constable, and he says in his words, what kind of a job is this? We die every day. As the sun rises, you see four dead bodies, 10 accidents, and 20 thefts. As if this is not enough, you have to look after the security of ministers, 10, 20 from Hyderabad, and 60 from the center. We don't have to eat or sleep. We get roasted in the hot sun. In between, someone comes and says, my wife eluped. Another case says, my daughter is missing. Yet another says, my mother-in-law beat me up. There is no end to such, such silly complaints. Everyone wants the police. Other day, some big company direct called us to complain that there was a snake in his backyard. Does he think we are snake charmers? No one is willing to spare a dime. Sub-inspector expects monthly collection of 1,000 rupees. Whose money? People's money. Do I have any share in it? Nil. Getting 100 rupees per month is a Herculean task. But when it comes to real work, I get four charges and six show cause notices daily. After make, making a watertight case, you reach the court and you find the advocates waiting like vultures. Witnesses are bribed to turn hostile. 
Every case has thousand loopholes. Everybody gets acquitted, and we get strictures in the process. No sleep, only tea. Not even burial for us. Finally, when I get to home, I cannot even recognize my wife. Unquote. This is how he narrated the job of the police in the most difficult one. He or she is expected to be a psychologist, a teacher, a counselor, a lawyer, and a superhero in one shift. This makes the job of police replete with contradictions. I can understand the difficulties in walking a tightrope. That is why I say policing is not a mere job, it's a calling. In 1789, noted philosopher Jeremy Bentham said that the police aids in keeping peace while the justice system punishes disorder. In 1797, Patrick Cahoon, widely regarded as the pioneer of police reforms in London, cluster a watchful police aided by a correct system of restraints to be essential for society if the evil of crime is to be cured. Cahoon and his associates, with the help of Jeremy Bentham, established a police system to prevent and regulate crime in London. His success was the driving force behind the establishment of the first modern public police organization. Essentially, the idea behind modern policy was based on prevention of crime. In India, the Britishers introduced the Indian Council Act of 1861, wherein a superior police service was created. There is no doubt that the imperial police created by the colonial masters was modeled to subdue and control the Indian citizenry. George Orwell, the famous author, had initially worked in the Imperial Police Services as the, in the subcontinent and described the work of policing as the dirty work of empire. The misuse of police by political masters is not a new feature. The British Empire deployed domination surveillance and coercion, which remain the enduring feature of the Indian police. When the Indian National Congress started leading the freedom struggle, the empire created a central intelligence agency for collecting information about political and social movements and the freedom struggle. You all know how the CBI evolved from special police establishment with the aid of the Delhi Special Police Establishment Act. The police is primarily tasked with maintaining the rule of law and is an integral part of the justice delivery mechanism. Even a vital link in the justice delivery process, property, property demands that police enjoys full functional autonomy coupled with accountability. post independence the reforms undertaken within the police forces have not been up to the popular expectation both in the Indian Penal Code and Criminal Procedure Code. The chapter on security for keeping the peace and maintenance of public order takes precedence over the provisions concerning investigation and trial. These provisions show the colonial need for punitive policing. These historical antecedents have not received sufficient attention while undertaking reforms. There has been several studies, including those by the National Police Commission, Dulio Ribeiro Committee, Padanabaya Committee, and Malimat Committee on police reforms. These committees mainly examine the issues concerning autonomy from political interference in police organizations. However, negligible attention was given towards living and working conditions of subordinate staff and officers. They also neglected police accountability with respect to human rights violation. These gaps need to be filled. Today, we are in the 75th year of our independence, and we have assembled here to discuss democracy, role and responsibility of investigative agencies. Given our experience with the democracy so far, 
It is proven beyond doubt that democracy is the best suited for a pluralistic society like ours. Our rich diversity cannot be sustained through dictatorial governance. It is only through democracy that our rich culture, heritage, diversity and pluralism can be sustained and strengthened. We have a vested interest in strengthening in democracy because we essentially believe in democratic way of living. We Indians love our freedom. When any attempt has been made to snatch our freedom, our elect citizenry did not hesitate to seize the power back from autocrats. So it is essential that all the institutions, including the police and the investigative bodies, uphold and strengthen the democratic values. They should not allow any authoritarian tendencies to creep in. The need to function within the democratic framework as prescribed under the Constitution. Any deviation will hurt the institutions and will weaken our democracy. The police and the investigating agencies may have de facto legitimacy, but yet an institution, as institutions, we still have to gain social legitimacy. Police should work impartially and focus on crime prevention. They should also work in cooperation with the public to ensure law and order prevails in the society. When it comes to the CBI, it possessed immense trust of the public initial phase. In fact, the judiciary used to be flooded with requests for transfer of investigations to CBI, as it was a symbol of impartiality and independence. Whenever the citizenry doubts the skill and impartial of its own state police, they sought investigation by CBI as they wanted justice to be done. But with the passage of time, like every other institution of repute, the CBI has also come under deep public scrutiny. Its actions and inactions have often raised questions regarding its credibility in some cases. As an institution, you have so many achievements to your credit. In the process, many of your personnel have put their health and life at risk. Some have also made supreme sacrifices. In spite of all this, it is ironical that people hesitate to approach the police in times of despair. The image of the institution of police is regrettably tarnished by allegations of corruption, police excesses, lack of impartiality, and close nexus with political class. Often, the police officers approach us with the complaint that they are being harassed after the change in the regime. When you try to enter yourself to the powers, you will have to face the consequences. The need of the hour is to reclaim social legitimacy and public trust. The first step to gain the same is to break the nexus with the political executive. Often, the best and talent enter the system in expectation of recognition and accolades. But if the threat of infection system looms large, honest and upright officers find it difficult to stand by their oath. The truth is that no matter how deficient and non-cooperative the other institutions may be, if you all stand by your ethic and stand united with integrity, nothing can come in the way of your duty. In fact, this stands true for all the institutions. There is a this is where the role of leadership comes into play. The institution is as good or as bad as its leadership. A few operate officers can bring a revolution within the system. We can either go with the flow or we can be a role model. The choice is ours. Here I would like to point out a few issues that are affecting the system. Lack of infrastructure, lack of sufficient manpower, inhuman conditions and especially at the lowest strength, lack of modern equipment, questionable methods of procuring evidence, officers failing to abide the rule book, the lack of accountability of hearing officers. There are certain issues which leads to delay trials, lack of public prosecutors and standing councils, 
seeking adjournments, arraying hundreds of witnesses and filing voluminous documents in pending trials, undue imprisonment of other trials, change in priorities with the change of political executive, cherry picking of the evidence, repeated transfers of police officers leading to a change in the direction of the investigation. These issues often lead to the acquittal of the guilty and incarnation of the innocent. This severely affects the public trust on the system. The courts cannot simply monitor every step. Reform of the police system is long overdue in our country. The Ministry of Home Affairs has its, itself recognized the glaring need of the same. In the status note on police reforms in India, I quote, Police reforms has, has been on the agenda of governments almost since independence. But even after more than 50 years, the policy is seen as selectively efficient, unsympathetic to the underprivileged. It is further accused of politicalization and criminalization. In this regard, one needs to note that the basic framework for policing in India was made way back in 1861, with little changes thereafter, whereas the society has undergone dramatic changes, especially in the post-independence times. The public expectations from police have multiplied and newer forms of crime have surfaced. The policing system needs to be reformed to be in tune with the present day scenario and upgraded to efficiently deal with the crime and criminals, uphold human rights and safeguard the legitimate interest of one and all." Unquote. It is an officially acknowledged fact that there is an urgent requirement for modernization of the police system. And there should be a political will to ensure democratic policing. Without such reform, the police stand to appear of out, out of touch and outdated. The justice delivery system in India draws its legitimacy from the Constitution. Every institution within our democracy must derive its legitimacy either directly from the Constitution or from the law that is made in the true spirit of the Constitution. Unfortunately, our investigating agencies still do not have the benefit of having being guided by a comprehensive law. The need of the hour is the creation of an independent autonomous investigating agency. For instance, in spite of various issues affecting the Indian judiciary, the public still reposes its faith upon the institution. This faith is largely due to the inherent autonomy and commitment to the constitution and laws by the judiciary. There is an immediate requirement for the creation of an independent umbrella institution for the investigating agencies, so as to bring various agencies like CBI, SFIO, ED, etc. under one roof. This body is required to be created under a statute, clearly defining its powers, functions and jurisdictions. Such a law will also lead too much needed legislative oversight. It is imperative for the organization to be headed by an independent and impartial authority to be appointed by a committee akin to the one which appoints the director of CBI. The head of the organization can be assisted by deputies who are specialists in different domains. This umbrella organization will end multiplicity of proceedings. A single instance these days gets investigated by multiple agencies often leading to dilution of evidence, contradictions in depositions, prolonged incarnation of innocence. It will also save the initiation from being blamed as a tool of harassment. Once an incident is reported, the organization should decide as to which specialized wing should take up the investigation. One additional safeguard that needs to be built in, into the scheme is to have separate and autonomous wings of prosecution and investigation in order to ensure total independence. A provision, is, a provision in the proposed law for the annual audit of the performance of the institution by the appointing committee will be a reasonable check and balance. There is a need for regular and upgradation of knowledge, deployment of the state of the art technology and international exchange programs to learn the best practices. Our four sick facilities are in need to overhaul considering the changing nature and complexities of the crime. With the police and the public order 
under the state list, and rightly so. The burden of investigation is primarily on the state police. There is no reason why state investigating agencies, which handle most of investigations, cannot enjoy the same level of credibility as that of national agency. The state agencies must be equipped to deal with increasing challenges in the field of investigation. The proposed law, central law for the umbrella investigation body can be suitably replicated by the states. Harmonious relationships should exist between the state and central agencies. Collaboration is the key. After all, the goal of all these organizations is to secure justice. In times of emergency and crisis, the police are often the first responder. They must be provided with adequate infrastructural and safety aids. In case anything untoward happens, the government must provide adequate support to the bereaved families and secure their future interests. There is a glaring need to encourage honest and selfless workers within the system. I am glad that the CBI has the tradition of honoring its heroes. Today I had the privilege of presenting President Medal, Police Medal to 34 officers and CBI Gold Medal to one officer and the DP Police Award to two officers. The nature of the job forces you to work under pressure around the clock. Your health, both physical and mental, needs to a lot of attention. It is here that the role of police welfare associations assumes great significance. They should be able to advocate the causes of the officers and the staff meaningfully and successfully. My wish for greater presence of women in the legal profession stands true for every institution. An issue that needs addressing at this stage is the representation of women in the criminal justice system. Often, women feel deterred in reporting certain offenses due to a lack of representation. Their presence in the policing system will further encourage hesitant victims to approach the criminal justice system and report crimes. Relations between the community and the police also need to be fixed. This is only possible if police training includes sensitization workshops and interaction to inspire public confidence. It is imperative for the police and the public to work together to create a safe society. Ultimately, you must remember that your allegiance must be to the Constitution and the rule of law, and not to any person. When you stand upright, you should be remembered for your courage, principle, and valor. The political executive will change with time, but you, as an institution, are permanent. Be impermeable and be independent. Pledge solidarity to your service. Your fraternity is your strength. Jai Hind, thank you. Thank you, sir. Now I request Director Central Bureau of Investigation to present a memento to the chief guest of today's ceremony as a token of our gratitude and appreciation. Thank you, sir. Now I request Special Director Sri Pravin Sinha to propose the vote of thanks. Honorable Mr. Justice, Envy Ramanna, the Chief Justice of India, the Honorable Judges of Supreme Court, Honorable Judge of the Delhi High Court, Sri Suresh and Patel, Central Vigilance Commissioner, Sri P.K. Tripathi, Secretary D.O.P. Government of India, Sri S.K. Jaiswal, Director CBI, and distinguished guests, former directors of CBI, senior officers, Government of India and State Government, Medal winners and their family members, past and present members of CBI family, 
friends from print and electronic media, ladies and gentlemen. It is my proud privilege to propose the vote of thanks on behalf of the Central Bureau of Investigation. At the outset, I thank Honorable Respected Justice N. V. Ramanna, the Chief Justice of India, for having accepted our invitation to deliver the 19th D.P. Kohli Memorial Lecture. Sir, we are indeed grateful for your extremely erudite, enlightening, and thought-provoking address on this subject of great contemporary relevance, democracy, role, and responsibilities of investigative agencies. Your Lordship has emphasized the urgent requirement of police reforms and police modernization, enhanced women's participation in police, of the accountability of police and law enforcement organizations towards the citizens of the country. Their fairness and transparency holds the key to preserve the democratic principles of our great country. The credibility and image that a public institution needs to build in order to win the trust and confidence of its citizens. Sir, I assure you that your inspiring words of wisdom will definitely guide and motivate us in CBI and the other investigating agencies to further endeavor towards strengthening the democratic institutions of our great nation. I also thank the Honorable Judges of the Supreme Court of India, Honorable Justice Srimati Indra Banerjee, Honorable Justice Vikram Nath, Honorable Justice M.N. Sundaresh, Honorable Justice Anrudh Bose for having honored us by their gracious presence, sparing valuable time out of their busy schedule. I also thank Honorable Justice A.K. Mendiratta of Delhi High Court for your kind presence. We are extremely grateful to Sri Suresh N. Patel, Central Vigilance Commissioner, and Sri Pradeep Kumar Tripathi, Secretary Department of Personnel and Training, Government of India, for having spared their valuable time to grace this occasion. We are indeed grateful to the former directors of CBI, to the distinguished dignitaries, the distinguished guests and invitees present here who have taken the pains of joining us on this day. I take this opportunity to also congratulate the medal winners and their family members and sincerely hope that they will continue their good work in the times to come. I also take this opportunity to thank the members of the electronic and print media present here in large numbers to cover the event. I am also thankful to the Delhi police for having made excellent security arrangements for this program. Lastly, it could not have been possible to hold this event without the untiring efforts of the officers and staff of CBI under the guidance of the Director of CBI, Sri S.K. Jaiswal. I express my sincere gratitude to all of them. Thank you very much. Jai Hind. Thank you, sir. I request all to please join for Haiti. Thank you.